Hello, go. hello, hello. Hello. How's everyone doing? All right, can't, all right. Can't complain. All right. So this is a talk over live. We have our on our show today, uh, Mike McCall. Mike McCall is the owner of MCM. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, he was the engineer for a praise radio. He did a lot of work with us. We enjoyed talking with him and engaging with him on the conversations that we had for each Sunday that we did the show. So we wanted to bring him back and see all the fun things that he's been doing. So welcome back, Michael. Oh, man, I appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be back on the mic with you guys again. Oh, yeah, thank you. Better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, so here on the talk over, you know what we do. We talk about family. We talk about uh, health. We talk about children. We talk about employment. And we just talk about fun things. You know, we want everyone to talk about whatever it is that they have on their mind and just freely speak about it without any interruption or any judgment. You know, it's okay. a platform. So we can talk about anything that you like to um, give us feedback on, anything that you've done in your life, anything, any situation you went through um, that would be great for you to share with us and share with our uh, listeners as well. So, mm -hmm. okay, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So how are you, Mr. Griffin? I am doing wonderful other than um the, this football team of mine. Uh this football <laughs> yeah, team of ours. Other, of ours, yeah. I know Mike, you are you are um well prior skins never the football team. Oh my god. If we win, we in and I'm tired. They just thinking up the place today. But other oh, than man. that, um other than that, it's been, you know, a beautiful um four days. We just of course the world celebrated the Christmas holiday. And, um, I would say, you know, um, enjoying that day with my beautiful wife was, was better than any gift that you can ever open. We danced and it was just us, you know, our little man, he's now, um, in New York, he's normally with us mm -hmm. on Christmas, but his mother decided to move to New York and take our little guy with him. Of course, Kobe J he's overseas, mm -hmm. um, serving his country right now. And normally they're here for here um but with that being said we improvised and hey i would say man it was great you know just having you know us two to be able to yeah you know screens that you're supposed to be in marriage you know what i mean yeah hey, that could be a great topic you know all three of us are married. Yeah. most definitely I don't know if, I don't, mr mike you got a wife right oh yeah i have a lovely wife we actually yeah. just celebrated our fifth year wedding anniversary and wow, our nine cool. year and our nine year anniversary of just being together is they're one day apart from each other. It's, oh, it's, happy anniversary! Happy, happy anniversary! Yes, yes. thank you. The big mm -hmm. five, man. It was it's it's been a, it's been a beautiful ride, and I just can't wait to see what the Lord has in store for us amen, in, for the amen. future. You know, I have to I have to say this: we we're all getting ready to celebrate our third anniversary. Okay. On actually, the third of January. Um, but we have been to it'll be our um tenth year. Okay. Ten year, ten seven years. You know, seven years together, three years married. Okay. On January third. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, thank so, you. So, Mr. Mike, I'm gonna let you take over and just explain to the people who you are and what you have going on. Give you a little time to. So you know, we all up, we all over this thing. So people know us too, but we want to make sure that they know who we're talking to this afternoon in this particular podcast okay well i appreciate it. first and foremost I, I would like to thank the talk over live for having me you know you guys are family so anytime you want me on the show i would definitely oblige uh but my Thanks name is definitely. mike mccall jr uh i am the owner operator of musical concierge by mccall um you most people see my emblem as mcm sound on instagram and also my emblem on Facebook is Michael Mikey McCall, but you will see my logo as MCM Sound on there as well. I'm a studio engineer. Um, I work at Praise Radio as a production assistant and a producer. I produce over 34 shows on Praise Radio. And I also, some of the behind the scenes work that you hear is me um, engineering it. Uh, but my baby is MCM Sound. It's a podcast uh, company uh, it's a musical engineering company. It doesn't have to be podcast. 
anything that needs to be engineered, I can do. Uh, I can put imaging behind your work, which is music, uh, while you're broadcasting or talking. Um, but the the best part about it is the podcasting for me. Um, I'm getting ready to move into the corporate sector come January 1st. I have two corporate clients uh, that will take me into a place that I've never been before. So I'm excited oh, about great. that. Mm-hmm. But I still will be doing private podcasting for people that want to jump into the podcasting realm. So I will never not do that because I think everybody has a voice and everybody needs to be heard and whatever they need to be talking about needs to be put in a, in a professional realm of sound. So that's, that's, that's a little bit about me. Um, and that's probably the most important thing about me is I'm a child of God and I serve the King. Amen. Amen. We love it. We love it. So that's so, wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, um, of course, with the talk over live, you know, um, when I invited Mike up, and just like I would, when we when we invite other guests, you know, we're trying to gear our show into a conversation realm instead of an interview. Although you have, you know, every right, you know, you have every opportunity to let people know who you are as you just did, which Mm -hmm. is great. Um, And we'll give you an opportunity to let people know how to get in touch with you if you are looking to take on more work um, in the future from from people that that will be watching this broadcast. With that being said, um, let's get into our conversation. You know, I brought up early about, you know, us being married and what a great conversation to have. And I'm going to tell you why, because I have a letter here from um, my wife's brother who is incarcerated. And we also read letters. We read a letter on a previous po- podcast from a gentleman. And, you know, she, he has been in there um, almost all his life since his wow. early twenties. So he hasn't had a chance to meet that wife and, you know, um, get married and, you know, have more children and just live out, you know, the dream that we all have been, you know, handed to when we're born in America. He hasn't had right. the opportunity because he did make those mistakes at a young age. But um, we have so many guys that are incarcerated. And um, with that being said, I just want to to reiterate that is important for our young children out here, especially our males. And Mike, I'm probably, you probably see this all the time. They're dying out here in the streets. Mm, you know, they're dying out definitely. here in the streets, you know, and they're getting younger and younger as we speak. So with that being said, um, as far as being married, I just want to say, you know, I've been married to my wife um, we're going on three years. And like Mike said in the beginning, he's been with his wife for like, like nine, ten years now. Uh, I've been with her nine years and we've been yeah, married, five, been married five, five of those nine. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. And, and I would say that yeah, being married is, a, is can be a wonderful thing. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's you uh, think? one of the best things that happened to me. Uh, is, uh, and later on, we're going to get to why my wife is the greatest, one of the greatest things that happened to me. I got a little mm-hmm. testimony for you, Mr. Warren. You, you're you not going to believe what I'm going to get ready to tell y'all. And, 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 I got and, you. And, and this talk over love. I got All you. Right. So so let me, oh, go ahead, Kim. Sorry. No, no, no. no. I just, I, I, so let me get into a little bit of this letter. Um, It's from Kim's brother. Like I said, his name is Mike. And he's been locked up for a while. And it's a po- powerful lover because letter because within his letter, he's saying how he's been um, actually um, sexually abused and how the correctional facility is, um, uh, how the correctional facility is in and how the correctional facility, um, their criminals, how the, um, the correctional officers and stuff are criminals and they get immunity. He's also right now feeling pretty good that Kim and myself and, and the rest of the family have pretty much um, been able, been there to support him since his mother passed, which is my wife's mother, um, which she passed in 2019, which mm-hmm. actually was part of why all this sparked up. So with that being said, you know, I'm going to dive into a conversation of what you guys think that I, I don't want to say parents because we always say that like it starts at home. But we can. But I was listening to someone every day. Can we continue to blame the parents? Can we no. continue to blame the parents? No, 
Not not at all. No, mm-hmm. because I think in most cases, and I could be wrong, but in mm-hmm. most cases, parents have done everything they possibly could have. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. To to correct or or try to change the behavior of a bad apple. And not I'm just using that term. I shouldn't say that, but somebody who is going down the wrong path. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And yeah. how can you blame now everybody makes mistakes and everybody's parenting style is different. And I think a lot of people do these things because of childhood trauma or some mm-hmm. trauma that they have faced in their life. And every parent is not perfect, but I truly believe a parent, like every, at least I know from my parents, they would, if I was going down the wrong path, they would do everything in their power to to mm-hmm. try to correct the behavior. So I want to believe that people out there that have been incarcerated, you can't, you can blame the parents to a certain extent, but I do want to believe that that parent did everything they could to try to get their child on the right track. Yeah. Hey man, I agree, I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. Did you want? You want to so, add something, Ms. Griffin? Oh, so no, I, I, I agree with Mike, and I'm just going to piggyback off of that because, you know, I have three sons, and and and, and uh, two, the two, one that passed, and the other one, they, they gave me a run for my money and uh, gave them everything I can give them, you know, even up to me being a single mother. I did all I could. You know, um, being a parent, as they all say, that doesn't come with instructions, but you are more or less um, giving them the right opportunity to either go this way, go left, or you go right, you know. And the right way is where you want to go. You don't want to go left because left you're going to go down to bumpy roads and you're going to bump your head a few times. You might not even live to bump your head, you know. So um, I've done that all I could, you know. I, I've, I've held their hand. But once they get a certain age, once they hit 18, 19, it, it's over. It's not much you can do but give them advice. You know, mm-hmm. you, you you can't put them over your leg and, and spank them and, and put them on punishment anymore. The punishment is being institutionalized like my brother is. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the punishment. And that's what my parents tried to do. They did all they could do with my brother until he just didn't care. You know, these streets take hold of us and it's up to you to get out if you want to change your life. You know, I wasn't the best. You know, but I chose to, and I think the best thing that happened to me was becoming a mom at a young age, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it made me more responsible. It made me know where I wanted to be at in life, you know, but unfortunately, some people don't think that way, you know, they just do otherwise. Yeah. So I have to agree with what Mike says. It's not always the parent. It's definitely the individual itself. I think that uh, me, myself, I think that the parent of today versus when, when me and my wife was coming up, the challenges today are just dire, man. I mean, with so much information being changed really, really quick, you know, our parents didn't really have to watch over us and what we were doing in our room when it came to um, di- connecting with millions and millions of people, right? Mm-hmm. And, and what I'm trying to say well, is that when you got to... Ch- when you, when you got a child now that can connect with anybody online, you know, I mean, that becomes another obstacle that that parent has to deal with. Mm-hmm. You know, even if you got, you know, somebody got to work, somebody got to leave out the house. So even if you have a mother and a father in the home and they live in a beautiful neighborhood and things of that nature, these kids are getting into things um, that that pretty much are taking them in a direction that they're not used to or wasn't taught in the household because their influence at such a young age can be a thing to where it can take them on a, on a journey that they may not be able to return from. So I think a lot of parents have big challenges today, whether just telling him, look, don't do this or telling her, look, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. It's beyond that today. It's beyond that because there's so many people, so many avenues out there for them to get in trouble. And, you know, a lot of them are getting in trouble right in their own room. You know how many little girls on social media showing their bodies, you know, on uh, TikTok or all these other, you know, um, platforms like Instagram. And they be young, you know, and they close that door and their parents give them that much freedom. But they feel confident because they're in the house. Right. They're in the house. So long as their child in the house and they feel like their child is safe. But look what their child is doing behind those closed doors. 
if you got a young girl or young guy that's very impressionable, when somebody starts typing to them across that line, it can get dangerous. It can get dangerous, you know, and I don't want to knock music and I don't want to knock video. I don't want to knock the video games, but man, it is out there and it is coming at full force and parents, you know, we, we got to come up with some advice, I guess, you know, for parents to, 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 to think about, you know, what is it that they can do to protect their, their kids more, you know, especially, you know, you have cyber bullying and things of that nature. So in my opinion, I just think that is very, very tough times for parents when it comes to these kids, man, you know? Okay. All right. Well, I agree, but at the, at the same time, I also think parents are getting younger and they're more involved yeah. in themselves. Uh, Cause I know growing up, first of all, I couldn't have no closed door in my mama's house. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and my mama used to not that she would be in my business because when I'm young, when you're young, you have no business. You know what I'm saying? Your business is to is to grow and to develop. But I recall when I was younger, my mom and dad coming in there. Hey, what you doing here, boy? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And it mm-hmm. may have been on a a little bit of comedic. Or like just a joking manner, but I knew they were serious. And my parents used to come and check in on me and make sure that I was doing things. But I I will say I have seen recently we letting electronics raise our kids. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like it's too much electronics. From the time, and I got young, I got a godchild that's 12 and I got a godchild that is is, um, going on too. But from the time that they were both born, you know, boom, there go the tablet right in front of them. I mean, and at first you use it as a learning tool, but then you use it as a, okay, he crying. He wants a tablet. Okay, I'm busy right now. I need to, you know what I'm saying? I think as humanity, we need to put electronics down. I even get sucked into my phone sometimes and I could be scrolling. And next thing I know, a whole hour go past and I have done nothing. So I think as society, we need to really get back into being involved, not being right. so disconnected because mm-hmm. of electronics and technology, but we mm-hmm. need to be more involved, hands on. Because my parents was hands on with everything, mm-hmm. from my education to my musical talents to um, just being in the house and 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 making sure I had chores and and I had responsibilities. They were so hands on. I really had no chance of getting in trouble. And even when I thought about doing something wrong or I was swayed the other way to do something, it was always, yo, what would your mom think about this? Or what would you, you don't want to dis... And I think disappointing somebody is more hurtful than making somebody angry, to me. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, you. It's one, when I hear you talk, you know what I hear coming from your conversation with your parents? Respect. You know, you respected Most your definitely. Parents. You know, um, this is two thousand. Well, respect man. and fear is cousins. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I understand that. <laughs> it's a you thin know, line it, between. It's a thin line between respect and fear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Well, respect. Well, fear and respect. But you know, let's let's tell the truth here. You say open conversation. This is me talking, man. It, it's it's, Most it's out the door. It's out the door, man. Let, let's not sugarcoat this thing, man. These kids are wild as ever. Yeah. You know, and you have there is good, no respect with you, them. you have good parents that are struggling, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And me and my wife we was having a conversation the other day, you know, and she said it best that you know these the, the parents, I mean, it's just they just is they just lost control and they can lose control of their kids, man, in a way to where you know they want control, but it's like what else do you do? Man, you back just you know you. Your back be tight, but go ahead and talk to him because I'm losing my train of thought here. Because I gotta remember what you told me. No, I just said you know you you the the children you lose you lose sometimes you lose hope. Like what do I do with my child? You know mm-hmm. I don't know what else to do. You know the the kids are out of control. It's like the kids are more in 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 tuned with the streets than they are with the parents. It feels like the streets are the parents. And the parents are just nobody, you know, they don't respect you, you know, and it's as young as up to 12 and up, 
-hmm. You know, I, I've seen it. It's just, it's just I, I, I don't get it. But I know me as a mother, well, you know, and me as a grandma, I still hold those values of my value. parents, yeah. the old values. Like you said, Mike, there was no closed, no, no closed doors. Not, not even when Kobe left here. That's why Kobe left. Mm -hmm. we, what, close what door? What spend a night? No, we don't do that here. Because that's how my mom raised me. You know, it's called respect. Right. You, know? mm -mm. you have company, now, leave the door open. And I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna tell you the truth about some things. I think where the disconnect is and where we fall short and where people get out of control is, is the system is made for parents not to really be parents anymore because everybody mm -hmm. trying to make, everybody trying to make ends meet, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so people struggling, they the money's not where it needs to be and that causes for lack of attention of your child because you at work all the time and by the time you get off work, it's hard for you to be a parent. You, you know, mm -hmm. you just work eight hours you just Amen. work eight hours making somebody else rich and mm -hmm. then you come home and then you got to, and you know, being a mother, being a father, that's hard work. Yes. Then you got to help yeah. with homework. You got to yeah. cook a meal. You know what I'm saying? I think the disconnect is really and truly after all of that eight hours of working mm -hmm. for the system, you know what I'm saying? The last thing you want to do is put in work in your own home. And, mm -hmm. and I hate to say that, but it's true. I mean, it happened yeah, to no, me. It, it happens to it me sometimes. To the, the first thing I want to do when I get home from work is go to sleep. Down. That's the yes, first thing down. I want to do is it, take a rest, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And the disconnect is that we got people that are young, so young having kids. Like mm -hmm. a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends in high school had babies before we graduated, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and you got people that are, their mindset is, and, and then it's nothing against a young parent. I know people have babies young all the time and they got to get it out the mud, but you are not mentally mature enough to barely take care of yourself. You right. know what I'm saying? And then, right. you, and now all of a sudden you thrown into something where you have to take care of somebody else and somebody that's codependent on you to survive. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is tough. That is hard. And then when you get into this working system, it's like, you know, you trying to you trying to eat, you trying to live for yourself, but you got somebody depending on you and they make it even harder to mm -hmm. to to uh and I'm gonna be honest with you, I really don't know how my parents did it. Like I, I don't know, like I never I know there were struggles, I know there was hard times, yeah. but I never saw it, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how they did it, and I'm glad because now my thought process is back at what she said. My wife said it depends on the child. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is this having babies young is not new. You get what I'm saying? They've been having babies young for a long time. No, I mean, I knew, they, I, knew they, I knew, I knew, I'm talking about back definitely. in the 80s, 90s, when they, you know, people was having babies early. But I'm going to tell you the disconnect, Mike. When you talk about disconnect, you know what a disconnect is at? The community. Our, you know, I don't want to go old school on y'all, man, but yeah. I got spanking from the next door neighbor. The next door neighbor would tell on you. You get right. what I'm saying? Like, like they would tell on you. And guess what? When they told on you, guess what? Moms believe you. You them. getting it? Yeah. Moms you can't believe that nobody. Them. Them. We talked about or it already. Or they correct you. Yeah. Right. Or they correct you. Yes. You get spankings from the neighbor back then, or you respected the neighbor just like your parents. So when you left, I mean, you know how I many latchkey, latchkey kids there was out my neighborhood. I mean, I'm talking. About Man. But they knew not to come out the house. Yeah, you know I mean, and it's the, right. the time. Don't answer the phone or the door changed, for nobody. Man. Don't answer yeah. the phone door for no times right. have changed. <laughs> but you had that community involvement, man. And I think today, you know, we just have so much more going on. And I, I'm gonna tell you, you guys, I, I'm pretty sure y'all agree with me. But this social media, man, social media, and and it's, it's, it took total control. It has taken total control, man. Well, I'm gonna Inform tell you, information did not you travel like from. that when we was. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. I'm gonna tell you where it comes from, though. Uh, with the social media, in the Book of Revelations, you know it says in the last days that people will become more vain. And when mm -hmm. you read the Bible, you don't think about social media when you think mm -hmm. about people becoming more vain. 
but mm -hmm. it, you you think about it like as in a in an older school way i know i did but when you look at it come on we got to take a picture for everything selfies you know what yeah. i'm saying social media is actually i think representation of what the book of revelations was saying when people mm -hmm. become more vain yeah you know what i'm saying because think about it how many how many followers do you got how many likes do you have how mm -hmm. many you know how many shares do you have and it's crazy because i don't really think i would i don't post a lot but mm -hmm. i think i'm geared to, i have to because of the business you know what yeah. i'm saying y'all yeah, exactly. yeah, got yeah. to yeah. like yeah y'all got to because of y'all business so yeah. it's like you can't it's almost you're codependent on social media. You almost can't get along in life unless you have, unless you post or unless you like somebody's page, unless you share, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and my wife jokes me all the time, but I think another disconnect is communication because mm -hmm. my wife laughs at me all the time. If you send me three, if you send me three texts back to back, I'm gonna call you on the phone. I'm mm -hmm. old school. I like yeah, to hear yeah, voice, exactly. but if you yeah. send me three texts, it's it's no point in texting me because if you send me three texts back to back, I feel like that's a conversation we could have. You yeah. feel me? And so yeah, my wife exactly. joked me on the time, like, yo, stop calling. She say, stop calling people on the phone when you could just text them. And I'd be like, well, you know, they just sent me more than one text back to back. So obviously it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we can call each other on the phone, and she it annoys her so bad because I'm so old school. But I think communication is where we are falling off as of humanity, yes. and yeah, and I think I, I it's just it's saddening to me to see so many people going to jail or have criminal backgrounds or 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 just you know being caught up in the system because once you're caught up in the system, you'll never be out of the system, yeah, point no. blank, period institutionalized forever I would, I would right agree, man. and I would even but it's meant to it's built that way though you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying it's built is it was manufactured for that reason and i hate to say it but it's crazy because think about it and, and i and you know what baffles me y'all i see free john john okay mm -hmm. but what did john yeah. john do Okay, exactly. yeah. John, yeah. John John shot three. John John yeah. shot three people. John John yeah. be in jail. But free him though. Free him though. Free him though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm lost with that one too. You know, I, I love this conversation. I love this conversation and because I see so many of that. Yeah, yeah. I I love this conversation because there is such a thin line, Mike. You know, we cannot solve world problems in one session. Nobody can. But this is the thing, man. It's like, I'm glad you brought the fact up of, of, of how social media work. Because yes, there is a positive to social media. Mm -hmm. And it's what we do, right? We use it for our advantage because, you know, it became such a great thing when COVID hit, right? Yes. When the pandemic hit, it was like everybody right. needed it to connect with. So it became a good thing. You know, I'm talking about that dark side, right? And I'm talking about these kids and that dark side. You got nasty men and women out here, man, and you have to protect your child, right? And we can use social you media for you. Got to know what you can, doing. Yeah, you got to know it. And, and I'm gonna tell you, Mike, what is? I mean, you want to know what goes viral, man? A fight. Not Stupid what we're doing right stuff. here. Not Stupid what we're doing stuff. right here. I mean, we can be right now. We can we can come with the creme de la creme of a conversation. Right, they don't want to hear that. <laughs> but let us let us all get together and start fighting. All three of us, we go viral we'll on the news. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It's like people but, geared towards you know that entertainment, that drama, stuff like that. But you know, if you're an adult, right? And I don't know what you consider adult. Some people say 18. Some people say 21. I say mature. Right? That's what I say, mature. Because some adults are not even mature, mm -hmm. right? But they just got the age on. So I'd say, you know, people who are mature know how to navigate social media. So I'm not beating social media up altogether. You know, I'm talking about these children, man. These kids have that extra layer of, you know, something that they can get into that we didn't have growing up. Right. If I wanted to get I, in trouble. I mean, I, I had it growing up, though. But look, Mike, if I wanted to get in trouble. <laughs> 
guess what? I, if I wanted to get in trouble back in the day, guess what I had to do? Go outside. Go out the house. Right, right, yes. right. 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 Yes, I, you know I wasn't getting it unless I bless my brothers and sisters. We got to fighting in the house or something. We siblings, you know. But to get in trouble in the house was like okay. If I brought home some bad grades or whatever, you know, you're in the house, you might get a spanking or whatever. But I had to go outside to get in trouble. They don't got to go outside to get in trouble no more. Right. You know, they do but it in the comfort of their own room. Too. Their own house. Yeah. Right. But when did when did we start like? Instead of trying to help somebody, when did we start pulling out a phone and recording it? Like, where did that yes. come from, and why is that cool? Why is that cool? Like, you see somebody Viral. getting beat up, and you like, instead of trying to save them because they could possibly yeah. get beat up, you the video first thing you do it. is pull out your phone and shout, "World exactly. Star!" Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, right, right. It's embarrassing. That's just a form and of respect, and, and, it, no and respect. it baffles me. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Instead of helping, it, it we... baffles me because we so we so quick to pull out the phone to to record. And and the crazy part is, I don't know. I just feel like for now, stupid stuff in, is entertaining. But why? Mm -hmm. I feel like it, I feel like it takes away my intellect when I watch mm -hmm. something stupid, and I'm stuck on it. You feel me? Like the, <laughs> the, the world, the world is getting dumber by the second. Because we so attached to this technology, and we ain't watching nothing but stupid stuff that yes. has no let me, intellectual yeah. value. Yeah. Let, let me let, let me let me give you my my deep thought analysis on why that yeah. is. Because, and I always like to go back to those school. Okay, Kim can agree with me. I, I remember when we didn't have a lot, you know, but when we got that new pair of shoes. Or when we got them new pair of jeans, man, we put those creases in them. We go outside, we fresh to death. We feel good about ourselves. But guess what, Mike? The more nice clothes we had, the more popular we was, mm -hmm. right? The more popular we was. Man, we was right, popular, right. Man, you know what I mean? And because there was no social media, so people had to see you. You had to go outside. You know, you had to have all these people. And if you could fight yeah. back in the day, you was popular. You know, if you had all the girls, you was popular, right? So damn popularity. Popular. Popular. So, so now on so social media, popularity has changed, man. Popularity is going viral. So people doing yeah. whatever the trend is to go viral. So if, if if to go viral is being stupid as hell, that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you had you had challenges, man, where people was putting gasoline on them bodies and sending them on fire. You remember that? <laughs> and it was going viral, bro. Yes. yes. <laughs> Hey, you know, but not that's why I say social have, media, man. That's why I say social media. But at what yeah, point, I, my, 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 you remember that? I mean, I'm like, who's sending the call for ALS? For ALS, right, right. Not, hey, ice. Ice. I'm, I'm not doing that. No, yeah. throw an ice on somebody to cure yeah. disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, to me, and people did it. It's crazy, and but I think that goes to show you how take your show here. No, you're fine. You go ahead. We, you're the guest. I, I hate to take. I hate to take your show here, but I feel like it's generated and created mm. to dumb us down mm -hmm. and to keep us to keep us not looking at what we need to be looking at. Hey, mm -hmm. I got this challenge for you. Let's see how many. Or like it's an experiment. Let's see how many dummies gonna dump water on their head and say it's for L ALS. You feel me? Ain't nobody mm -hmm. donating no money. We just dumping. Mm -hmm. We just dumping water on our head. I feel like <laughs> I feel like somebody in the background was like, "Okay, we got thirty six thousand people that dump water on their head. Let's see what mm -hmm. else we can make them do." You feel me? Like, I, mm -hmm. but that's just me. I think different. Mm -hmm. I think different. If and and you know what really what really grinds my gears about the social media culture? When has it ever been cool to videotape somebody when they down and you giving them some money? Yeah. The Bible, yeah, you yeah. know, you know, in the Bible it says that it says, "Don't let the other hand over what the other yeah. hand is doing." Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you're not you're not supposed to be you you're not supposed to be doing it. I have given, I probably given twenty five thousand dollars away, like throughout mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. and not one time have I been like, "Hold on, take a picture of me doing this," because mm -hmm. because when you're doing that, does it really come from the heart? Are you really mm. giving to this person because because you felt emotionally connected to this person's story, or you felt connected enough that you wanted to give, or are you really just giving because you know it's about to get you twenty five thousand likes? Like, 
that that really grinds my gears when I see somebody doing something for somebody and taking the picture of it. Like, isn't that goofy? That's not goofy to y'all. That's not weird. If it's, no, if it's not for a right cause. Now you got a lot of people that do those um, type of things. Like, I have a nonprofit, you know. And my nonprofit consists right. of me giving, you know. So I give, but I got to show cause. But you, know you what I mean? but, but you, but you giving for the right, yeah. But you got right. a nonprofit. It's right, different. Right, when right, you do right. it. Gotcha. It's you doing it because it's a nonprofit. I'm talking about like these fools that be like, yo, 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 take a picture of me, and they give. They got a big wad of cash, and they're giving it to a homeless man. But they not, they not connected to a cause. That you have right, a cause. Right. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. That's they're not saying, connected yeah. to a cause. They just want they just got a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Or or yeah. they just want to be seen in the light. Like to me, that's crazy. Like, yeah. I, like, I, like, like you got a, like you got a um uh, like you got the celebrity that go into Walmarts and stuff and buy everybody stuff yeah. from Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's and it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I get it. Mm-hmm. But if mm-hmm. to me, if the cool the cooler thing is for me to have somebody tell you I did that and not show you mm-hmm. I did that. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, if I was a celebrity, they'd be like, hey, Mike McCall just bought out the Walmart for, 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 Oh, I can't hear him. Hello? Can he hear me, Ah, can you hear me now? Can okay, you hear me? yeah, yeah. Yeah, we missed the okay, whole second. Okay, I'm sorry. I, oh, wow, okay. I had to, I had to ignore somebody's call. But, uh, oh, okay. no. No, I'm saying like, wouldn't it be better, you know, say I'm a movie star, so man, I'm rich, and I just go buy Christmas out for the whole Walmart. I'd rather somebody calling you and saying, "Girl, you wouldn't believe what Mike McCall just did." Instead of having cameras, like, "Come on, follow me. Look, look, yeah. look what I'm doing." I just feel like, <laughs> yeah. I just yeah, feel like, what it, what, what is that? You know what I'm saying? They Am still I doing need it for the right to have reasons? some confidentiality too. It should be private. Privately yeah. done, you know, because they yeah, might not want to be know, filmed. They might not want to be taped. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. I know if I'm down and out, the last thing I want, I'm homeless. I got to help me, son. The last thing I want is somebody with a camera in my face taking the picture while you handing me money. Come on, man. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like I'm already I don't down know. I out. just, I just, I just think. Right. Mm-hmm. I think as a culture, we just got life effed up, man. Like yeah. we not yeah. living right. We not living right. We we living crazy. These phones and this tech. I sound like an old man, and I'm only no. 31. You sound fine. But this, this, these phones and this tech. <laughs> these phones and this technology got us wilding for respect. It mm-hmm. do. It, it got you know, us, you have to. It got us like it, it's the ultimate keeping up with the Joneses. Mm-hmm. You know, anything you do, you always got to go back to the to the beginning. Um, you know, I, I remember having a conversation with some older gentlemen and. They were talking about cell phones, right? Because they wasn't used to them, you know. And you know, cell phones right. and things was changing. And you know, and I had to go back and I had to tell them, you know, it used to be a time where they carried mail on the back of a horse, right? Information, right, right. you know. And and it took, you know, and it took probably weeks and weeks and weeks for that information to travel, right? So therefore, let's fast forward from from the Pony Express all the way up to the day when information travels in split seconds. You know what I mean? In split seconds. So anything right, that you right, right. have like that can pretty much get out of control. So therefore, if we have Most a definitely. tool, if we have a tool that we're using like social media and videos, and you are that person who wants to go and give, you know, frivolously your money or whatever. You know, a lot of people want people to know, and that's their way of letting people know, hey, look what I did, right? Because I, I, I think that, you know, if you, you got a lot of stingy people out here ain't gonna give you nothing. Mm-hmm. So I do think it comes from, that's heart, weird. Like, you know what I mean? I don't think people just give their, their money away just to be doing it. They just want to, they just want you to see what they're doing, but you got to understand you reference the Bible, but a lot of them not Bible totals. You know what I mean? A lot of them not. I mean, they heathen. You know what I mean? They they out here doing whatever That's right. under the sun to get their money. You know what I mean? So they ain't worried about what's right. in the Bible. You know what I mean? All they doing is saying, "Hey, hey, I'm my name is MC whatever, or I'm a music or a football whatever, and I got ten grand in my pocket. Let let me go to Walmart. Yo, cut that camera on so I can buy everybody groceries." But the people that's receiving it, they don't care. Hey, go on by mine. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. So, so therefore, right. I, I, I think with social media and information traveling, 
I just think when you got millions, you got millions. Look, look at us right now. Look at us three. Mm -hmm. Man, back in the early 70s, we couldn't have never done this. We either had to go somewhere and yeah. get a contract. They had to look at you. Hey. And you know what else they was going to say, Mike? Yeah. We want you to say this. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't, okay, you, gotta, you can't say that. You got to say so. The freedom of information and, you look like that. and we want you to look like this. Okay, mm -hmm. you need to lighten your skin. You need mm -hmm. to do this. You know you what I mean? Right now, up. yeah. So right now, it's a battle going on. It's a battle between what we're doing, Mike, and you doing right here and with us three. We trying to talk positive. We trying to give people a positive outlet, right? Yeah. But you are, we are never ever get rid of. That that other side, man, it's gonna always be good versus evil. You know what I mean? And we and we just gotta make sure that we That's we real. stay in this fight, man. We gotta make sure we stay in this fight. We gotta make sure that we do our part. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because anytime that anytime you got that scale that's unbalanced, right? You gotta keep that thing balanced, man. Because once good, once evil outweighs good, we doomed. Most, so therefore, with, with this with this this information. And when it travels, man, that's why, you know, I started the conversation all with these kids because, see, us three up here know better. It's crazy. See, yeah. we know better because we're adults. But you got some adults, man, that just got the age, man. They don't got the mindset. We got a lot of uh, mental health going on out here. You got people trying to snatch up kids, man. You know, we had this big thing where all the kids were against, you know, I mean, the sex trafficking. How do you think yeah. that's so prominent? It's because of this information. Yeah. Man, it's because it's some little girl man. or some little guy, 10, 11 years old, in their room with the door closed on social media. I don't know what they're doing. And like you said, the parents are doing what? Probably out there getting high or whatever and thinking about themselves or thinking about their Gucci shoes and their yeah. um, Prada bags and their, their um, Hermes or whatever. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so Right, right, right. So I can't help it. I, I, I you know, it's I'm trying crazy to, to me, yeah. too. So they're, I'm sorry that I'm in and out, man, but I'm trying you to. Know, I'm trying to yeah. Oh, nah, you good. You good. Cause this is a, I love this conversation. Yeah. You know, what's crazy to me too. And I, and I'm a sucker for it. I ain't even gonna lie. My social media got a bunch of scantily clad women up there. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> like, when did that become cool? What's that? When, when, did, when did that become cool? Like to just be shaking your rump and, and, and oh, half hey. naked. Like yeah. when did I that don't, become? I and, don't know. And, and That's the you know, trend right now for a lot of them. It's crazy music because it's it, it's everywhere. It's, it's you everywhere. know what? It sells. It sells. It's getting you likes. This thing with this uh, communication with social media to get. We talked about this yesterday. We talked about the red thumbs. I mean, the red hearts versus the blue thumbs. Um, the respect. Oh yeah, factor you feel like somebody that. love you more with exactly. the red heart. Now, if you get the red heart, you like, you love, you popular, you you popping, you, you know. But if you get yeah. in the blue, then you you necessarily just ain't you ain't there, you know. Mm -hmm. And it kind of can kind of yeah. set in emotions, especially when it's coming from someone you may be connected well with. You know, they might give everybody else a red, and then you get a blue. That make you kind of feel. That hurt your feelings. <laughs> you know, so this is it's just yeah, it's yeah, what I feel. You can do to you. So this is why we call it bullying. You know, what I'm cyber bullying. That is another another part of yeah. it. How you treat a person behind the cyber scene, bullying is so crazy. It is terrible. And if you don't mm -hmm. know how to hold your emotions and how to handle this, the young people that is on this, they take it and right away. The one thing you you don't even have to say anything now on social media. You can just do that and consistently keep doing it to one person, a little child, or someone that's in their emotions might be going through a mental state and they can lose their mind. That one thing can take their life. Mm, yeah. Because you, well, right. you gave them you know, a blue said, thumb. You know, I said so, this on the uh, radio too. If you're going through some mental health, like I got to take the time and stop and say, get some help. Yeah, some, you have if you having problems, if you're not feeling yourself, you feel you have thoughts that you're gonna hurt yourself or hurt others, get some mm -hmm. help. And mm -hmm. and in the black community, I know it's frowned upon getting some help, but ain't they nothing wrong, wrong talking mm -hmm. nothing wrong talking to a therapist. I got mm -hmm. a I got a therapist to I gotta unpack give some of the childhood childhood traumas Come that on. I've been through. Come on, you know and then you go now and, and society now will take you there. Yeah. Go back to where you was at in exactly. your childhood. So therapy is very well yeah. needed for all of us. 
all of us. We just suffered a pandemic and we're still and in. First of all, I think I think everybody, you know, I know y'all got so different persuasions up here, but I think everybody black gotta have a, a therapist just because what we go through on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. We, we are tra- we are a traumatized people from mm-hmm. systematic mm-hmm. racism. And I just think Everybody that's black need it. You know, if you want to give us 40 acres in the mule, give us somebody in therapist and, and let us, let us, <laughs> you on, feel me? Give on, us some on. free, give us some money, some free education and a therapist. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Let us get out, yes. let us get our mind right. Yes. But mm. I do want to share this with y'all because it's, I got a crazy testimony from 2020. Crazy. Okay. And I was, Mr. Warren, I was telling Miss Kim about this but a little bit before, but I literally, okay. Hack. Matter of fact, this is a segue to take COVID serious, please. Wow, please wow. take COVID serious. Yeah, take COVID serious because I'm not a person that was like, oh, this could never happen to me, but it happened to me, and I literally almost lost my life behind mm. COVID. And the cr- wow. the crazy part is, I was asymptomatic for a whole week, like a mm. whole week, feeling good, and then I got the little test, like. Um, somebody in my office had exposed us to it. So we all had to get tested. I ended up having COVID and not knowing I had COVID and was feeling good, like feeling amazing. And then it took about a week for it to get real bad. And one night on a Wednesday night, I it felt like I had ran a marathon. Like I just start coughing. Couldn't stop mm. coughing, right? And mm-hmm. it felt like somebody had choked the life out of me. It felt like somebody had choked the life out of me. Like, it felt like I ran a marathon, and right after the marathon, instead of putting a medal on my neck, somebody choked me. You feel me? Like, I'm trying to catch my breath, and somebody choked me. And if it wasn't for my end, I found out I was going through a a diabetic crisis at the same time that I was dying from COVID. So, like, the crazy part is, I was going to the hospital, can't breathe, they put me on oxygen, and then the next breath, the doctor, like, how did you let your diabetes get this far? And I'm like, what? Diabetes, mm. you know what I'm saying? So so not only take COVID serious, take care of yourself. Hey, oh, man. Yeah. I literally, I literally almost died two oh, different man. ways. Laying wow. up in the high, literally. And the crazy part is going back to my wife, if it wasn't for my wife taking me to the hospital for coughing like crazy, I literally, they told me I literally would have went to sleep and never woke up. Oh, wow. And, and, the cra- and that's the crazy, that's my testimony of 2020 is you got to make sure you're with the right person. Come on. What if I was yeah. with somebody that didn't care about me? Come on. Yeah, what if exactly. I was with somebody that was just like, oh, you just, call, you just cough and you'll be all right. And can you imagine if I would have went to sleep? Mm-hmm. And my wife, because we was we was separating because of COVID, I was in the guest room. She was in the uh, regular room. Could you imagine her waking up in the morning, going in the guest room, and I'm dead? Just mm-hmm. oh, dead. Oh, man. Yeah. And so I, I really, I'm playing with everybody. Yo, take this mess serious. Take it oh, serious. Yeah. Take it serious. And you, know, and you know, people be like, oh, you know, it's, I don't know. It, it can't happen to me. It can it really can. And the crazy mm-hmm. part is the COVID that I had, it was like somebody flipped the light switch. Like I was all good. And within 20 minutes, it was all bad. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, literally all bad. They had to put me on oxygen and everything. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, I still got some, uh, obviously I still got some work to do in, in this That's life. Right. Cause on. you know, I could have, I could have went home. I could have went home two different ways. Um, and that's what mm-hmm. baffles my mind is I was literally dying two different ways at the mm-hmm. same time. You know, it's, it's crazy that you say that, Mike. And, you know, I just want to say this, man. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Thank God that you know Thank you're God. God man. Yeah, and you're protected, man. You that's know, right. I tell you, those those testimonies. That oh, you man. And so I, people can I didn't know that God is real. Yeah. yeah. Most of it. I didn't even tell y'all this. This is the crazy part. This, and I had talked to a pastor before I had uh, the COVID reaction. Like, I was in the shower, and I was praising and worshiping. I'm talking about I was sending up timber. I prayed for everybody in my family, everybody I know. Mm. And 
And I'm talking about going off, like singing songs, just giving God the glory. And the yeah. crazy part is, like, 20 minutes after that, I was losing my life. Mm. 20 minutes after that. That's the crazy part. And so I had talked to a pastor friend. He was like, the spirit man inside of me knew that something was about to yeah. happen that I needed the Lord. And so mm -hmm. the spirit man inside of me made me praise the Lord. I was basically praising the Lord for delivering me, and I didn't even know I was going to be delivered. Mm. Wow. Amen. That's the crazy That's mm. the crazy part. And I, for real, all I can say in this conversation is if you don't know God, you need to find him because we yeah, live yeah. in a wicked, crazy world. Yeah. And yeah. tomorrow's not promised. Tomorrow is clearly not promised. And the only reason I'm here talking to y'all today is because of the grace of God. He mm. saw fit mm. to save my life. Hey. He saw fit Amen. that my work was not done. He saw fit that I had Amen. more work to do. And I and I'm because I'm trying to tell y'all the, the death angel was really on my door. Two different ways mm. I was dying at the same time. Yes. I'm yeah. not supposed to be wow. I'm not supposed yeah. to be here right now. And um, the crazy part is. With the diabetes kick, I didn't even know I had diabetes. My blood sugar was over 600. Whoa. So wow. my, and the doctor looking at me, it's a whole miracle. The doctor looking at me and she talking to me and she's like, how did you let this happen? Do you know? That spirit was on you. Spirit was with you, Mike. When you got in that shower and you started praising God, He, you, you knew you needed that. He knew mm -hmm. you needed that. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Most he definitely. knew you needed yeah. that. That's why mm -hmm. you was in there praising God because you knew this was about to happen. Let me tell you something. You just took me there. You just took me there because Word. the night my mother died, I don't know when my mother died, but for some reason, every time somebody in my family has passed, and I had three of them, I kept getting sick. My stomach kept hurting. Mm. And I kept getting sick and I couldn't sleep. And the night my son died, I stood up all night walking around. My husband kept saying, get in the bed. I said, I can't get in the bed. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. God didn't want me to mm -hmm. sleep because you know, I needed to get up and go get my son. And we got a phone call. My son ain't mm -hmm. here, but God will tell you when something is about to take take flight. And he needed you to pray. Exactly. That spirit is it? So I'm glad. Mm -hmm. That is that. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. He was prepared. Yeah. It's crazy because he was. Yes. He was really preparing me for what was yeah. what was like, and it's crazy because my mind, you know what I'm saying? I was just in my in my in my immature mind. I was just like, oh man, I'm in the shower, praise of God. God, you've been good to me. Thank you, Lord. But the spirit yeah. man inside of me was yeah. like, you need this right now. That's you right. need to have an intimate connection right now. So because yes. I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to show everybody that I'm gonna have to save your life. Like mm -hmm. you really about to. You really about to die tonight. Like mm. you really mm. on the verge mm. of dying two different ways. And it was crazy. Mm. And I will tell you this. If it wasn't for my wife, who knows where I would be right now telling me to get up and go to the hospital, taking me to the mm. hospital, rushing me to the hospital. Who knows where I, because my doctor, my um primary care physician was like, you know, you really got to be thankful for your wife because if you, if you would have just went to sleep, you would have never woke up. Like mm -hmm. I would have been in a coma or even worse, yeah. I would have been dead. You know? Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, so thank God is good, y'all. And, and I yes. can, whoever is listening to this, seek him. Seek the kingdom of God. To. Because you to. never know when your last breath will be. Mm -hmm. And I would you hate for your last you breath it. to be right. I hate for your last breath and you not know him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, exactly. It's the yeah. you and it's your surroundings around you. You know what I mean? So you got to walk faithfully with God. I've learned mm -hmm. that, you know. I learned that you got to walk faithfully with God. You got to mm -hmm. answer to him. You got to believe in him and keep him in your heart, you know, because you just never know. When that encounter comes, you don't know what to do. You stiff, you stuck. You know, witnessing three people that I love dead, I didn't right. know what to do. I didn't know what, I'm back like, oh, back. what do you want me to do? I don't know what to do no more, you know. I wanted mm -hmm. to lose it, but kept telling me, get up and you got to get up. You got to get up. You're not finished. Get up. Get up. And this is what's keeping me here now. And I consistently at times get low. I get weak. I get depressed. I get, I miss them. But I, I know God is like, no, 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 no. This is normal for you to feel that way. But no, let's, let's get mm -hmm. this done. Let's finish. You're not finished yet. So I consistently keep going. So that is good, Mike. And I'm just glad that you shared that with us. And I hope yeah. someone listening. Yeah. 
Peace to I that. I gotta Africa. tell everybody. I... Yes, that's what he put you here for. Mm, that is your mm, testimony yeah. serving everybody. Yeah. People wouldn't think that that would have happened to you. You, you didn't know, think it would happen to you, you, right? You know, Mike. No, you, you know, I, Mike. I definitely did. You know, Mike is 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 making me feel. First of all, thank God that you're still here. But it's making Amen. me know, and my wife know Amen. that we continuously do what he, we are told to do yes. because you was on our heart. Mm -hmm. You know, when we was when we, I mean, you the first person that we have talked yeah. to Amen. on this platform. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And to for you to have a testimony to be able to tell somebody for years to come. Right. That's you right. just gave a testimony of how God saved your life. And, mm -hmm. it's, you know, as long as podcasts be around, this is it'll be around. You know, so, so that's what we say about our stories and information. We talked about information. See, that's that positive information. So you just what is need to be used for a real live testimony of how God saved your life. And in Amen. the midst of him saving your life, he most definitely used it. He used a virus to save you from what was really killing you. And, and that was an amen. Amen. You see what I mean? And that's yeah. the crazy, that's it. That COVID, COVID really and truly saved my life. COVID. Exactly. Yeah. Think about yeah. it. If, if, and I, and I was unaware, I was so unaware. No doctor had ever told me, hey, you pre diabetic. Hey, mm -hmm. you this, you that. And COVID really saved my life. That coughing spell, that me not being able to breathe, get up and go. was yes. like it's it time made to go. Me get up and go. And yes, it's right. so, it, it and it's so crazy. It's like y'all. I keep thinking back on that night. Like it's. I wish y'all could have been a fly on the wall, seeing me praise the Lord, because mm -hmm. it was like mm -hmm. I had never worshipped like that before. Like I'm in the shower, tears coming down my eyes. I'm just straight up worshiping like it's i wish somebody could have been well my wife got it it's crazy because i was worshiping so hard my wife was in the um bedroom recording me like not recording me in the shower mm -hmm. but just mm -hmm. recording me worshiping because she was like yo you was going hard and it's to the, the the punch in the gut to me is the doctor told me COVID was killing you and you was dying of diabetes at the same time like mm -hmm. the, like the mm -hmm. devil like, like the crazy part is, like the devil really wanted me bad. Like death he didn't really win. wanted he didn't me. Oh, he won all of us. And, and I gotta, win. I gotta tell, I gotta tell everybody. Like it's my life mission to tell people one how serious COVID is, and two how amazing we serve, how amazing the God we serve is. Because Amen. I, I could have literally, Amen. yeah, this could have been really different. Y'all could have really had a post. Rest in peace to our engineer. He passed away. Because of COVID and mm, diabetes, mm, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that could have been yeah. the that could have been the alternative. And it's crazy, it's crazy. Like the diabetes aspect, like you really gotta take care of yourself. Like I really, really didn't know. Like I really like mm -hmm. was oblivious that my blood sugar was high. Like I really just, and it's crazy that I found out in the hospital while I had COVID. Like I really just you didn't know, know that I you had know, diabetes. You know the crazy. And, you know the crazy you know the crazy part, Mike? We just did a podcast on it on the A1C. What's up? We did we did you, oh, if you wow. go back and look to yeah, oh, if you go yeah. back and listen to our previous yeah, we did a whole show. I actually our last show was on that because I went yeah. to wow. the doctor. I had my A1C had been high since 2017. Yeah, wow. my A1C was 13.4. 13.4. Yeah, wow. so I I yeah. got this little, I got this little oh, man. App. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I was, I was literally Whoa. diabetic crisis, diabetic yeah, you, coma you know, area. You know, yeah, you know, five point six. Five, I know that five point six is right. Is is like and um like third. Whoa, yeah, you was there. Oh yeah, and, and it's crazy. Yeah. And 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 it's crazy because the doctor was like, I don't even under like I don't medically understand how you were. I was fine though. Like the crazy part is besides the coffin, like I was up, I was alert, I wasn't sluggish in my mm -hmm. speech. I had like full full my mind was working correctly. And the doctor was sitting there looking at me like, 
how are you even talking to me right now? Like, how are you mm, not laid on the bed? Like, how are you? Wow. How are you able to? How are you able to enunciate and without slurred speech or not going into a stroke? Like, the grace of God really mm, and truly mm. kept me. Like, and yes, it brought yeah. tears to my eyes while I was in the hospital because I just was like, God, you so good. Like anything could have happened to me, but you made sure they didn't. And right. you know. Just let me. I mean, yeah, I got diabetes and I got to take insulin, but this ain't forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My, yeah. If that's if that's a small constellation of my life being saved, then so be it. You know. Let me let me share some. See, we was talking about information, Mike. Here you mm -hmm. go. This is it, my brother. We was talking about information. We've been talking about information. Guess what? See, this what God do. See, this is the battle, right? Mm -hmm. This is the battle. You on the front lines, my man. You on the front lines, because guess what? You got a testimony that's so powerful, can't no devil in the world take it from you. And I know every chance you Amen. get, guess what you're going to do? You're going to scream it from the mountaintop. You get what I'm saying? See, those are the things that we try to let people know that's non-believers, that, hey, that testimony is everything. That testimony is what makes people believe that, that God is real. Because we got so many people out here no, from your definitely. atheist on down who just don't believe. They're trying to put color on God. They, oh, God, Jesus is black and this. And, you know, you got, it's, it's so much going on. You, you got people running around with the Bible in their hand, hollering at other people because they don't believe what you believe. It's just crazy, right? But the thing is, to have a young man that can look mm -hmm. somebody in their face and, and say, man, leave me alone, man. God saved my life, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. Save my life because Save I was dead. Twice. You know what I mean. I took. I, yeah, twice. Uh, and you can tell at the same and, and time. That's the thing. But, but when you say it now, it's real. Yeah. yeah, yes, sir. It's real. It's real. So that passion gonna be there, and can't nobody else tell you no different. So think about you multiplying billions of times or millions of times. See, wow. that's the army of God. Wow. See, that's the army Amen. of God. When there's a Amen. when there's ten million. 15 million, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 million of you with that same testimony of how God saved their life. See, that's what keeps God alive. Mm. That's what keeps God going. See, Amen. and that's what makes the enemy mad. Because see, if the enemy would have killed you, guess what? Now you got his you got his army coming over and saying, ha, 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 where's your God? Mm. You get what I'm saying? Now when somebody right. say, where's your God? I'm going to tell you what my God is. He saved me for two of them, and he used a virus to do it. Tell me God mm. ain't good. Come on, man. Amen. Come on. You got a, you, you got a story Amen. to tell, baby. You got a story to tell. So well, I'm glad you told it here first. Yes, yes. We got the exclusive. Yeah, hey, yeah. this is this is uh, hey, this is an exclusive break right here. This is an exclusive. <laughs> yeah. This is an exclusive break right here. Mm -hmm. Well, we 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 were so happy to talk man. with you, Mike. I'm, we don't I'm thankful wanna... for y'all. Yes, we Most appreciate definitely. you. We 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 want you to come back. Most and definitely, yes. Yeah. And, and keep that spirit over you. Continue uh, shouting his name to the mountaintop in the shower mm -hmm. everywhere you can to let people mm -hmm. know your testimony. And I'm so yes, thankful yes. that um, you, you let us know that you're well and your wife, give my blessings to her for being such oh, a good most wife. most definitely. I think we, we all need women like that because I'm like that with Warren. Warren was mm -hmm. very sick one point and I rushed him to the hospital. I said, no, it ain't going to happen here with me. You know, so mm -hmm. I right. had yeah. my one opportunity <laughs> that she used her judgment to know, like, I got to save my husband. Something is wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, Amen. we know when Amen. things are not right. You know, so you got to care not only just for yourself, you got to care for your loved one, too. And that is your husband, your other half. Amen. So I don't know what I would do if my husband leave me. So I do everything I can to keep him here. Amen. So, Amen. Thank you, you know, that's what I did, Mike. I love you guys. Yeah. I love you guys. Yeah. I love, I love you, you too. Mike. Too, man. We love love you, you too, man. Love you too. Take care of yourself, man. Take care of yourself. Yeah. We most definitely gonna have you back on, man. I enjoy talking yes, to you. you know, yeah. Conversations, yeah. you know. I mean, an hour didn't pass, man. I don't even feel like it, you know. That's right. I <laughs> enjoy it, Mike. It was, it was like you, that at you know, the radio station. Yeah, yeah, we never exactly. wanted to leave. Yeah, you know, we right, never right. wanted to leave. We enjoyed you, your engagement, your conversation was always, always well you know, spoken about anything that any topic we had, it was, it was good to have you with us and we wish we could have stayed longer, but you know, things happen. Well, so yeah. I really appreciate it. 
Yeah. So when you become big and you get your thing going on, call us and let us come on down and be a oh, party. Oh man, in. that's 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 <laughs> that's already gonna happen. What you mean when I become big? When y'all become big, don't forget <laughs> yeah, to call me, okay? Hey, we gotta. Hey, we most definitely gotta meet the wife one day, though. Yeah. You gotta have dinner, oh, dinner oh, oh, yeah. when everything calm down and everybody get their shots of um, you know, vaccines or whatever. Whoever gonna get it, whoever you know, we'll get together. Yeah, we'll get together, man. Invite you guys out to dinner. You know, I'm. I'm I'll let my wife pay for me, Chris. She got the money. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna hold y'all to it. I'm gonna hold y'all to it. That's that's one of my. That's one hey, of my speak spots, those man. things. That's as, definitely speak one of those my things spots. as if they are, right? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All righty, Michael. We're right, gonna let right. you go. We thank you. Okay, so you have a great rest of your yes, week. Ma'am. Stay mm-hmm. safe. Uh, continue praying for us as we're gonna continue praying for Amen. you. Yes. And join Most us again definitely. back on the talk Amen. over live. Live. Okay. Yep. All right. Take care yep, now. Have a good one. Love y'all. All right. All right. Bye bye. Love you too. Love you too. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.